Hi everyone, it's Andrew here. A lot of you might know I've been running what we call quick stitch events. Quick stitch events is where we get a whole bunch of people together for a Zoom call. We break up into small groups, randomly assigned into these small chat, they call them breakout rooms. Uh, have a chat for about 10 minutes or so, come back, mix it up, do it again. And it's a great way of breaking the ice um, and getting people to connect online because if you get into a really large Zoom call, it's, a really, it's actually not great because it's very hard to get a word in edgeways. But if you divide it up into small uh, groups, it makes it better for everyone. It also applies to, uh, we've got a bunch of members looking at, do they create a language, uh, lang chatting around, you know, learning French or speaking French or Spanish, but people are on different levels. So you can break them up into different groups, depending on the level they're on. A whole lot of applications. So I've been asked by a few members how to do it. And this tutorial is just gonna show you how to use Zoom to create a quick stitch event. So let's jump over to Zoom first, and there's a couple of things you need to know. I'm gonna walk you through how you set up a meeting and then how you run one, and then you'll probably have questions and ideas. Let us know in the links below. And if you are watching the video, remember to subscribe to our channel because we will be updating uh, more tutorials like this one in the future. All right, let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so first thing you need to do is to create a Zoom account. Uh, so I'm assuming you've done that already, if you don't, have a Zoom account, you need to go to zoom.us, up here uh, you can see the, the web address, and create an account with Zoom. I've got one already set up, so I'm just gonna log into Zoom and it'll take you to your account. And you can see, this is how the, the account details are set up on Zoom. You've got some information about yourself, uh, you've got some uh, uh, link here about the meetings that you might be set up or are coming up, a few other things. Uh, but the thing we're gonna look at first of all is your settings. So I click into settings and you'll see settings itself then has a bunch of uh, sub settings. And if we jump down to the advanced, or you can also scroll down, but I'll just jump down straight away. And you can see there's this, this setting here called breakout room. So you just need to click that, make sure that's enabled. Uh, for a lot of free accounts, it's not necessarily enabled when they first sign up. So you might have a free account or a paid account on Zoom. Uh, and according to Zoom, either account can create a breakout room. You just need to enable it. That will mean the breakout room button will show up in your Zoom app when you're using it. If, you're, uh, if you don't have this enabled, I, I think you won't be able to, to do it. So make sure you do that first. All good? All right, now the next step is to jump over to Zoom to set up your meeting. You can do this via the, the web interface, by the way. So if you scroll all the way back up to the top, you can see we've got a setting here for meetings and you can schedule a new meeting. It's actually, I find it easier to do it using the Zoom app itself, but either one's fine. So you can have a look here and let me just jump over to Zoom. So here's the Zoom app on the Mac. I'm, I'm using a, a Mac OS laptop, but if you're using Windows, it might be a bit different. You can also do it from your phone. Please note that if you're using Zoom from your phone, I, I'm pretty sure you'll struggle to, to do all the things you need to do to run a breakout session. So if you're running a quick stitch, try to use it from your computer uh, and do it this way. So first step is to schedule your meeting. So we might schedule, I'm gonna set up a Zoom call for the Stitch team. So I can show you what, it, what the, the uh, call's like in action. So I'll give it a name. So Zoom call for Stitch team, and I'll give it a date uh, here. Now you can ask it to generate automatically or use your own personal meeting. I recommend generating a new meeting room automatically every time, that means only the people who are coming to your event will get this unique Zoom meeting room. Otherwise, everybody gets access to your meeting room and might use it uh, for the wrong reasons. Unlikely, but it could happen. So, so generate automatically. Uh, you can then set up a couple of settings, like uh, I'd always recommend having video on for your participants, because that's the whole point. You're trying to get to see people. Uh, you can choose to whether they can connect via telephone and audio. Uh, you don't need to worry about those settings. But a couple of things you probably want to do first is enable your waiting room. And I generally recommend muting people on entry. You don't have to, if there's not a lot of people coming, you don't, don't need to have people on, on mute. But if you end up with a really, really big event, you'll mute them on entry and then they can unmute themselves uh, after they've joined. I'll show you what that looks like when you've got your event running. For my one, I, it's, I know it's going to be a small event because it's only the, the Stitch team, so I'm not going to mute everybody. Uh, I will enable the waiting room just so you can see what the waiting room is all about. 
And you'll notice that I didn't set require a password, but you can do that for extra security. And that will mean you have to share the meeting password out with people in your Stitch event. So just add it in the, the details of the activity. But in my case, uh, I, I, because we've got the waiting room, I, I'm not enabling the password. Some people struggle with it a little bit and up till now we haven't had any issues with it. So I just turn that off, but it's up to you whether you want to enable it or not. Once you hit schedule, then Zoom will create your meeting for you. And this is the key thing here. So the, uh, the Zoom meeting link is the one that you are gonna to need to share out in your event details when you set it up on Stitch. So just, just write that down. You can copy this whole invitation. You'll see here, because I enable people to dial in by phone, there's a whole bunch of phone dial-in numbers. Uh, but in general, for a proper quick, quick Stitch, it's actually pretty hard to, to get a great conversation going when it's just a phone call. So you might find that you only enable uh, the web interface and you do it that way. So, um, so either way, you, you'll include either just this information in Stitch when you're setting up the, the account, or you can include all of this information in the additional info uh, for people to join the meeting when it's time to join. It's worth noting that the, this information that you include on your Stitch event in the Zoom link and the extra details only gets seen by attendees of the event. People who aren't attending won't get to see that. So it uh, helps make sure that only people who are meant to be coming to your event actually come. So once you've got that copied in, you create the Stitch event. I won't show you how to do that because you know you either already know how to do that or we can make another video for creating Stitch events. Uh, but check, check out Stitch support if you need help. But you create your event, schedule it, and then it's, it's really helpful in the lead up to the, the event, post a message letting people know, uh, reminding them that it's coming up. You can send the link again and let them know that it's, it's, it, they're about to attend. Please, please attend. And the one thing I, I tend to do is I advise people to click on the link a few minutes before the start time for the meeting. That means that when it's time to join, everyone's kind of in the meeting room waiting. You can open the meeting room, or the waiting room, sorry, and everyone comes in at once and it you can kick off the event. So I'll show you that uh, when, when this event for the Stitch team takes off. Uh, let's jump over that. So that's, that's in about an hour for now, but I'm gonna cut now and I'll show you it in a second. Okay, now here we are. And it's time for your event. So what you need to do is open Zoom and we'll go here and you can see on the Zoom, there's a Zoom homepage, but if you go at the top, you'll see uh, meetings. And this will list out all the meetings that you've got scheduled. And you can see this is the one I set up before for Zoom call for the Stitch team. And you can see it's a bit of details here. You can have check out the meeting invitation uh, if you need to share it or anything like that. But just before the meeting starts, you can hit start. You can do that anytime you want, but uh, I normally do it about you know four or five minutes before the start time for the event. And that will throw you into Zoom. Uh, here I am on screen. Hello, that's me. Now, Let's have a look and see what's going on. So down at the bottom, we see that there's a particip participants button. So let's click that. And you'll see at the moment up here on the screen, we've just got just me in the court. You'll also see there's a couple of options down here under the more menu. And as I said before, you can change those options I, I mentioned before about muting people on entry if you want, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, you can allow participants to unmute themselves you can change the settings about whether you let people in or not. But you can see there's a waiting room here. So the waiting room is where people, when they start to join, they will be held until you let them into the meeting. Now, no one's joined just yet. So let's just wait until we start seeing people join. All right. Here we are, and you can see we've got a few members of the Stitch team joining now. There's this little section at the top that shows me that we've got these three people waiting to join, uh, and I'm in the meeting already. Now, I can admit them all right now, uh, and that would mean anyone else who joined after that point will go back into the waiting room. So sometimes you might forget that. So I would always recommend if you, when it's time to bring people into the, into the meeting, you go down to this more option and you disable the waiting room, because that then lets everybody from then on into the meeting and then you hit admit all. So we're gonna turn off the waiting room 
and admit everyone into the meeting. And you'll see it takes a little bit before they all come in. You can see the Stitch team gradually coming on now. I've got them all to be quiet, so they're not gonna say anything just yet, but they will in a second. Now, if you're the organizer, you'll need to, one thing that's really useful is clicking the gallery view so you can see everybody at the same time. Uh, and it looks like we're missing one person. Hopefully, uh, Jason will join us shortly and then we'll, we'll get a chance to, to break everyone out into groups. But we've got the members of the team. Hi, everyone. Say hi. <laughs> um, this is a bit weird because I'm doing the recording, so I'm talking to you listening to the recording, but the Stitch team's having to listen to me talking to the recording. It's very strange. All right, so let's get into the um, uh, into how we use the breakout room. So you see down here at the bottom, um, I've, I've got, because we enabled that setting before I, I showed you, uh, we have the ability to set up a breakout room. You also, as an organizer, can do things like asking people to unmute themselves. Uh, you can rename them. Here comes Jason. Um, you can rename them. Uh, you can make them leave the room if you don't like them. Try not to do that, but, uh, but if you need to, a bunch of things like that. But the breakout rooms is the main thing that uh, this tutorial is about. So what I'm going to do, hi guys, are uh, you ready to go into a breakout room now? All right, so what we're going to do for the demo, normally we do it for a 10 minute thing. So I'm going to throw the Stitch team into a breakout for one minute. Uh, they'll be for a minute and then they'll come back and you'll get the idea of how it goes. So what I do is I click this button here and you get to choose whether you automatically assign people to a room or manually. Now, if you're doing a big quick stitch, you don't do manually, but if it was a smaller group and you need to assign people based on their language skills or something like that, then you could manually assign them. Uh, but in my case, in our case, we're just gonna make it automatic. And given we've got seven people, I'll stay in the main room. So we'll probably divide it into two rooms. So that puts three people randomly into a room. So that creates the breakout room. You see, you get this little window. Uh, and it's shown me that it's created a breakout room with Andy, Brian, and Jay in one room, and Anastasia, Jason, and Richard in another one. So um, if you don't like it for any reason, you can recreate all the rooms, uh, and then it'll do it again. In fact, why don't I do that now? Let's see if it mixes them up. Oh, look, it's changed up, changed up the group a bit, so there's a bit of overlap. So when it's time to start it, oh, that's sorry, oh, before I do it, then you also have this option here. So you can choose to move everyone into breakout rooms automatically, you should do that. Uh, because then when you open the room, so away they go. Um, you can allow them to return to the main room at any time if you want. And then in our case, uh, I normally do for a quick stitch, 10 minutes, but let's set this just to one minute here, uh, notify you when the time's up and there'll be a countdown. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna open all rooms now. So guys, you're gonna go and have a chat for a minute and then come back, okay? Mm -hmm. Sounds good, all right, open all rooms. And then you can see here that at, gradually everyone leaves the room and then you're left on your own. So if you're the organizer, you get a time to just chill out and relax. Now, if you want, you can actually go and join one of these rooms. You also see up the top here, we have a countdown timer, and you've also got the countdown timer on your screen saying there's only 40 seconds left in this particular meeting. Uh, but if it was a 10 minute thing, you'd see that it's 10 minutes. If someone needs, to, needs your help, they, they might ask for help, and you can go and click join into one of these rooms. I won't do it now because by the time I get there, then it'll be time to come back, but you get the idea. So you can join people. You can also send a message to everyone in, in the meeting room. Uh, one thing to note is when you're in the main room, this is the main room, you don't have the ability to, you can only chat with anyone who's in the room at the time. So if you wanna go and send a chat message to, to one of the, the rooms, you've gotta go and join the room and then send a chat message. Um, but I'll show you a chat message. Now you can see uh, the time's up and you get a choice. If you think people need a little bit of extra time, you can keep them going, but we're gonna close it now. And that gives them about 30 seconds to, uh, they get a timer to, to say they're coming back. And then in about 30 seconds time, they, everyone starts coming back into the room. Sometimes, oh, here they are, coming back. Welcome, welcome everybody. How good was that? Oh, we've lost a couple. The first room came back. We're still waiting on the other guys to come back. So Zoom sometimes has this kind of, uh, a little bit random. It doesn't always uh, do what you expect, but we're still waiting on the other guys to come back to the room. Where are they? I don't know what's going on. Um, you've got the idea. One thing I, while we're waiting, here they come now. Um, hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, one thing, I, I was just mentioning this chat session here, chat button here, so keep an eye out for it because members on the call may well chat, uh, send you a chat message to ask a question, particularly if they're off on mute. Uh, we, if you've attended one of my ones, we tend to get people to put their hand up so that you can ask a question because if you've got lots of people in this big room, then that's a bit challenging. So look, that's it. Um, 
Look, on the call, I might as well introduce, we've got Andy. Wave your hand, Andy. Andy, Anastasia, Jason, Jay, Richard, and Brian. Uh, and so they're the, Stitch, the passionate Stitch team that's doing all of the work behind Stitch. And we don't normally have you guys on camera, but it's great to see you. Um, and that's it. That's it for the tutorial. So hopefully that's helpful. And at the end of the meeting, all you need to do is click end and end the meeting for all. So bye, everyone. Bye for now.